upward to the cloud. Okay, Philly, welcome. It's so good to see you today. Thank you for joining me. Fiona, nice to see you, Fiona. Hope right. everybody's well in Chicago. Greetings here from Galway, west of Ireland. Yeah, we're all holding down the fort. Um, uh, well, Billy, today is our kind of relaunch of our of our podcast, Immigration Revelation. Up until now, it's just been in audio format, just on on podcast apps. But um, we we've been getting lots of great feedback on it, and we wanted to. We thought maybe releasing it as a video in addition to the audio. Uh, would be just something that people would find interesting and when I was thinking about um, how I would kind of relaunch this and what that would look like I instantly thought of you and I would absolutely have loved to have you as our first guest on this and I think it's kind of fitting that it's St Patrick's Week um, or Irish American Heritage Month in the US and um, we were both on the Zoom with President Biden yesterday. I saw you there as well. Um, and so I'm just honoured that you're going to be our first guest on our new, newly uh, relaunched re uh, yeah. yeah. Um, And so, I mean, Billy, you have such a long history, successful history in lots of different things. Um, and for people who who may not know you, I'm not sure that there are many people who are not familiar with, with your work, but you're a very successful restaurateur. Um, you have been a long time advocate, not just for Irish immigrants, but for immigrants in general in the US. Um, mm -hmm. I think you've been really instrumental in, in having a bipartisan conversation surrounding immigration, um, which we'll get to later. Um, but you're a native of Galway. Um, you you were made a free man of Galway. Is that right? It was, it was. Yeah, I got a free man of Galway. I think 2015. Brilliant. It's a great honour uh, because yeah. very, you know, it's given out to very few. I don't know how I deserve that. Oh, stop! But, um, <laughs> people before me, including uh, Hillary Clinton and uh, President Reagan. Wow. Uh, uh, Mayor Daly. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, a really Drink great company. Well, it means that I can hold, a, I think, it's five sheep in Air Square. In the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! The next time I get to Air Square, I want you to exercise. <laughs> that right? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! And you also have an honorary doctorate degree, right, from NUI Galway? Yes, at the same time as well, an honorary Brilliant. doctorate of laws. Yeah, so so a really, really great honor for my hometown. But yeah. I always kept in touch. I think, you know, when I left, uh, when I immigrated to the United States in uh, 1998, like I've never lost my ties with, with Galway City. And it's, mm. it's actually a sister city of Chicago as well. So everything slots in, as they say. Yeah. And of course, we have a home in Galway. We always retained a home in Galway, which is nice to get back there. So I've been here actually for the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, nearly the year, May, middle of May, and Dan came in middle of uh, June, and we stayed here because of COVID. It was safer here. We we're out uh, a few miles out from the city centre in a rural setting, very safe. Mm -hmm. So because of COVID, uh, we just didn't go back, and then the restaurants were closed most of the year, you know, opening, closing, and you know, what, what went on, of course, mm -hmm. all over the United States, and here in Ireland as well. I mean, we've severe lockdown here in Ireland, over COVID. Uh, so we stayed here and I might be staying because I'm actually running for election. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. We as well. certainly well, will. Uh, more, a little bit more permanently than I, than I was over the last uh, 23 years. Oh, well, hopefully you'll still be back and forth. Um, oh, we'll def oh, definitely get to the election. Absolutely. Um, and so I, I've heard, Billy, I'm so, I really do consider you a friend and a long standing mm -hmm. mentor of mine. And I have heard you speak on many occasions, but um, there's a story that kind of sticks out to me. You spoke about, was it seeing JFK in, was it in Galway when you were a child? Can you tell us about yeah, it? Yeah, it, it never left my mind. Uh, 1963 in June, a few months before he was killed. Uh, he visited Ireland and visited my hometown of Galway. We were a small town that time, I think maybe 25, 30,000 people. 
and I must it, in air square where I'm supposed to hold the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. But, uh, I'll always remember when I was there with my mother. I was 13 that time, and uh, I never forget the just the indelible imprint that uh, President Kennedy left on the whole country. I mean, you can go into any house in Ireland, not recently, well, certainly uh, up to the last 20 years, and in every house in Ireland, there was a photograph of JFK, probably beside the Virgin Mary, mm. or Jesus, up in the in the living rooms. They, they had such a, it was such a momentous event for Ireland. But ever since then, I had something about the United States that I really, it, I always had a great admiration for what I stood for. Mm. And I always thought, God, I wonder, as I got on, like, I'd love to go there and see could I make, make out there business-wise or whatever. But it took a while before I got there. I didn't get out there until, until 1998. So from 63 to 98 is a long time. So it is. Well, you but were I, busy at home. You had stuff to yeah, do there. Yeah. yeah, there was stuff to be done, get married, have children. <laughs> but, yeah. It was, uh, no, yeah. but it was great to get the opportunity actually to go there. Uh, I was actually 47 years old when I, when I immigrated to the States. That's and amazing. Just, you know, Fantastic. and that goes to show you that, I mean, not the 47s old, I'm actually, t I'm turning 40 later this year myself, but um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it, but it's, it's not necessarily a typical time to, it, it depends on your story. I guess it, you're, you're a, an example of that. You can emigrate to the US or to another country at any age. And, and if that's something that you want, want to do, you were able to do that later on. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, now, uh, now Irish people now, you know, they think nothing of traveling anywhere in the world. Yeah. And social media, no more than you and I today, like mm -hmm. it's so convenient to, to, to communicate or whatever. Uh, but I suppose if I analyzed it, you know, if I sat down and went through it step by step, I don't think it would have happened. Yeah. But I don't think anyone like that in my stage where I didn't have to, uh, to immigrate. Mm -hmm. uh, for, I think where most of uh, our Irish ancestors had to immigrate because yeah. there's nothing for them in Ireland. Well, by necessity, they had to go. But uh, I just think I, I said, I, I took the Amy, went to college and got a rowing scholarship, my daughter, to, to Boston University. I said, that's mm -hmm. the sign. Yeah. And I said, I'm going. And I really didn't put too much thought into it. It was always the back of my head, but it worked out fantastic. And we ended yeah. up in Boston would have been a natural home because that's where most of the west of Ireland, uh, yeah. it's a big Galway town, Boston. And that's where Amy went to college. Uh, but I, I, I got down to, uh, I'm down to see a cousin of mine in, in, in Chicago. And I really never left to Chicago. So that's the where we are. And my, all, my, all, my family is there, my four children, and my, now my eight grandchildren were born there. Fantastic. So it's a great story. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and I'm so lucky that you came to Chicago and that I did too, because I don't know yeah. where our paths would have crossed. Um, but sure. um, yeah. and it was in so you came over and you opened up the Irish Oak, right? Which was a it was a beloved pub um close to Wrigley Field in Chicago where the Cubs play. Um and it was during your time as proprietor of the of the pub, right, that you kind of became aware of the issues with immigration. Is that is that true? Yes, it was. Yeah, I we used to you know breakfast, lunch, and, and dinner there in, in, in the Irish Rock restaurant. And there was one particular day, I think lunchtime, I was coming back into into the Irish Oak, and I saw there was about twelve or so. Uh, construction white vans, you know, all Irish guys inside in for lunch, uh, electricians and uh, plumbers and uh, plasters, you name it. And we got talking to them. Actually, some of them I would have known, and they're all young Irish guys. Mm -hmm. And I don't think one of them had a driver's license. And they asked me, would I represent them? Uh, because they thought I knew Mayor Daly. I don't know how they got that feeling, but. <laughs> <laughs> You go with your driver's license. Brilliant. And that's how it started. And I founded the, uh, the Chicago Kells for Immigration Reform. And there's some great guys around me there, Michael Leonard, uh, Sir mm. Regan, uh, Brendan McGee, uh, and others, uh, many, many others, and you joined in as well uh, mm -hmm. later on. But um, so it, it started from there, really. And then I felt that time, I just felt that 
we were a small group in a lot of Irish. We know a lot of Irish, but we were a small group. Yeah. Uh, in Chicago compared to Hispanic uh, uh, immigrants and undocumented. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day looking up uh, who else is involved in the, in this immigration movement. And of course, I looked up the and I found the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. Yeah. And that's really where I started. Josh Hyatt uh, was uh, uh, CEO there at the time. And uh, we joined in with him and then it became a much bigger movement. I knew I was doing the right thing. Because mm -hmm. now we had more power, uh, with more numbers, you know, power and numbers. And yeah. uh, and then I, I was very much into bipartisan politics as well, because I don't really think that one party should have full ownership of, of any immigrant uh, issue. It, mm -hmm. it has to be um, a bipartisan issue. And, and it turned out, funny enough, with the... Uh, the uh, driving licenses it, in 2013, January 13, I think, uh, after how many years or oh, 10 years or so, we finally got a bill passed in Illinois, as you know. Yeah. And, and now there are nearly 300,000 undocumented uh, drivers uh, who were tested and passed their test and are insured driving yeah. the roads of Illinois. And of yeah. course, other states have taken up our, our model as well. So it was really, it just shows you that you need the numbers and then the bipartisanship. And it was very much a bipartisan bill because uh, the Republicans came in and Tom Cross well, well, at the time uh, was leader of the House uh, in, in, uh, in Springfield. And he gave us the votes to, to, to carry the driver's license with right. the Democrats, of course. I mean, there was a majority of Democrats, but it was bipartisan that we got to the line. Yeah. So we were so really pleased about that. And then yeah. it all led into other the national, I was on the national scene then uh, with Senator Durbin, who's always been one of the greats uh, in immigration reform. Yeah, so absolutely. So that's really where that progressed. Yeah, but I mean, so from the guys sitting in the van, hopefully they were able to get some of those driver's licenses that you worked so hard to get. And I know it was, um, you know, kind of hearing the story, uh, I don't know that people understand how much work went into that effort. And I know that it was you back and forth to Springfield. It was years and years and years of work to, to get that. Um, and so well done to everybody involved. And I think, yeah, yeah with the Chicago Cults for Immigration Reform, um, what you were successfully able to do was to bring the Irish voice into the immigration debate. And I think that, you know, we have such a we're the beneficiaries of the Irish immigrant privilege. I think we are, you know, we mm -hmm. have this privilege, not always, right? It hasn't always been that way, but because Irish Americans were able to come or Irish were able to emigrate here and, and then had the likes of JFK and now President Biden. And so, and I think, you know, we have, we're represented in the you know, police force, in the in local government politics, and like in so many different facets of it that I think we do get this extra just like a privilege. And, and I think that you've been able to use that to advocate for all different immigrant groups in all different ways. And I think what I find has always been so inspirational of the work that you've done, Billy, is that you've been able to kind of marry, I think your like your business interests with making that a by making immigration the bipartisan issue that it really sh should be. And I think that that's where you've been so effective with your advocacy. Well, thank you. But, but as well as that, what we did, and, and going on from the Illinois, uh, the Illinois uh, Coalition for Immigrant Refugee Rights, uh, we then founded uh, the Illinois Business Immigration Coalition. Mm -hmm. And that was a bipartisan group of business people, uh, and uh, of bipartisan, and it was chaired by John Rowe, for, uh, yes. chairman, former chairman of Exxon, Superman. Uh, a Republican, re, a Republican uh, supporter, of course, and we that has really been successful. And we have a full bipartisan group: Democrats and Republicans yeah. and Independents. We don't care. Mm -hmm. Once you're there for immigration reform, we know that we need immigrants working for us in the United States. We yeah. need them here. It doesn't matter what country you're in. Right. But that has now gone from the Illinois Business Immigration Coalition to the American Business Coalition, and it's expanded into uh, I don't know, seven or eight other states. Yeah, I'm getting emails from them, Florida, Texas, all over right. the place. 
Yes, and in New York, and, and and the driver's license have been introduced in other states as well. So it just shows you like what uh, the movement can do, and it, it yeah. does take. But we are making great progress uh, in, uh, and of course, as you said earlier, it's not immigration for the Irish; it's immigration for all yeah. uh, ethnic groups. And I think that's been the, that was the strength of, of the movement that we started. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it's been to see you know from with like the Illinois Business Immigration Coalition where that started and what has happened now I mean I've been on zooms where there have been um you know Senator Durbin, Senator Menendez I mean so many people just talking about the values of immigration because you can look at it from so many different ways right the humanitarian aspect the economic aspect there's lots of different arguments that you can make for just sensible immigration and immigration reform as well um and so, yeah, I think that the work that's been done, the grassroots work that's been done in Illinois has been, you know, it's been used as a blueprint in other in other cities and states. Um, and I think having someone like John Rowe, who is, you know, as you said, a Republican, proud Republican to, to talk about immigration, that's been yeah. something that's been missing from politics over the past four years because of just, I think, the damaging rhetoric that we saw really made it difficult for people who maybe were on other sides of the aisle, per se, to, to come together and to have conversations. But hopefully we're getting more because, you know, we're going to talk about immigration reform. Maybe we'll just start talking about it now. But with immigration reform on the horizon, um, we do need the support of Republicans. As we can't just do, yeah. Democrats just can't just do this on their own. And so... Um, you know, I'd love to hear what you're thinking about um, the kind of the, the prospect for immigration reform at the moment. Well, it's going to be very difficult. I mean, it, it, luckily, uh, there's a new dynamic uh, in the administration with President Biden. There's no doubt yeah. about that. Uh, and thankfully for that. But uh, it's still going to be very difficult. Uh, Dick Durbin, Senator Dick Durbin, is now the chairman of judiciary. So he'll be initiating our laws with regards to immigration and immigration reform. And as you know, at the moment, uh, there's bills being moved in, in, in the Senate uh, and the House. The uh, Dreamers, of course, which he yeah. has been the champion for over 20 oh, years. Yeah, over absolutely. 20 years. And also the TPS, the Temporary Protected Status, yeah. uh, and also uh, uh, agricultural workers. That's right. And I think what now, I, you, We've got to be very careful because he doesn't have the votes to get a full comprehensive immigration bill from. He needs 10 Republicans and yeah. he hasn't got I know, he said that, yeah. You know, and uh, so we, I see where uh, Senator Graham has co-sponsored the Dreamers with him. So hopefully we get, even to get those through, to, you know, I think what they're doing is that they're, they're, they've opted for a piecemeal approach. Yeah. Uh, in other words, that if you get those three to, then you're talking about a few million people. But uh, it's going to be difficult. Uh, and he was on on a call last week, actually, with um, the our American Immigration Business Coalition, and just made this point as well. He just doesn't have uh, ten Republicans to pass a major bill, yeah. even though fifty seven percent of Republicans. Uh, and 70% uh, of Democrats want a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million undocumented. Now, it, oh. it's, it's, and this has been consistent, you know, that figure for the last for, for five, six years. That has never changed. And, and still, we just, it's so difficult to get it, to mm -hmm. get it. We had one in 2013, the Gang of Eight, uh, where Graham and Senator Durban were involved in as well. It got through the Senate and one of the biggest bipartisan. Uh, votes ever, yeah, and of course passed in the Senate. Oh my God, it's, it's long last, and we had the votes in the House, and Speaker Boehner would never put it to the floor. But, I mean, I, that, we, was that was a quote, that was terrible. That yeah. was that was so heartbreaking that. So it's just so 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 difficult uh, yeah. to get. Oh gosh. Hopefully, I think they're right, yeah. doing the right thing at the moment. Uh, actually going for those three pieces uh with the dreamers the tps and, and the agricultural workers yeah 
Yeah, it's been, you know, it's been years of a lot of heartache, I think, for us advocates Mm -hmm. in this space. And I know, Biddy, we've gone back and forth to Washington, D.C. I know my husband, Mm -hmm. Brian, and I, one day, we just drove up for a weekend one time to, that was probably in 2013 when, you know, for, for all the marches on the mall. And, you know, it's been... We've been close, very close a few times. And um, I think that it's hard when you see that that the Americans overwhelmingly, you know, or at least the majority of Americans do support this. And also when we know that we have all these figures, it's 11 million people, but it's like every one of those is a person and it's a story, it's a mom, it's a dad. It's like, you know, we know some of those, that group. And it, it's heartbreaking when you know that um, we can be close, but but then sometimes seemingly so far away from, from getting some type of solution. Yeah. And all people are looking for is just an opportunity to regularize their status and to yeah. be able to travel home, to visit parents, you know, and, and that's all they want. They want to be able to contribute as they have been. People are not taking, immigrants have always given way more than they've ever taken from, from America. And yeah. I mean, that's just what they want the opportunity to do. And I think it's getting people to, you know, oh, it, it, it's, I know we're not giving up, obviously, we're, this is an ongoing. No, no, and we, and we can't. I agree with you. We can't because look, uh, it is what America is. Yeah. It's ingrained in, in, in our DNA there. Immigration is what America is, uh, it, it has always benefited the country, so it has. Yeah. Of course, there's the controls. There, uh, absolutely. You, you, everybody agrees with that. Everybody. What we have to do, we, we need these workers. We need immigrant workers. Yeah. Uh, but I think hopefully we will see some breakthrough. The rhetoric will not be as severe, definitely, as it was. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, the, the, the country will be healing a lot, hopefully, over the next couple of years. Uh, and we, we will get back to what everyone in the world yeah. expect from the United States. Yeah, I hope so. And I hopeful. And I think that, you mm. know, it is a time of healing and it's a time of, you know, recognizing just the sacrifices that people ha- have have gone through. And I think that with everybody being forced to to remain like in in shelter in place you know i think we've been given just a tiny insight in what it might feel like to be an undocumented immigrant not being able to travel home to see family right with all these limited yeah. mobility just a tiny bit of like empathy that we can understand how people feel have always felt when they're in that spot um and yeah, and I think immigrants are so entrepreneurial by their nature, more so than native born Americans. I think in as we're coming out of this pandemic, we want to be able to encourage like innovation, entrepreneurship. Why don't we empower these immigrants to be able to like start the businesses that they want to start or just, you know, and one way we can do that is by helping them with their immigration status. And it would also contribute a lot of money to the federal government in terms of filing fees. And so I think that there's lots of ways that um, to look at this and hopefully we'll be able to have some of these conversations going forward. Um, While we're on the topic of immigration reform, I I would like to just chat about the Irish E3 visa that I know myself and you have worked on for years as well. Um, Can you tell, um, for people who maybe are watching or listening who are not familiar with this, can can you just give like a brief kind of synopsis of of what has happened in the past and kind of where we are today with regards to this? Right, sure. Uh, the E3 bill is a, a bill that was designed for uh, the Australians uh, for their help in, in the wars with them. And they got this deal uh, over 10, or mm-hmm. 10, way over 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and they got 10,500 visas uh, yearly. They've never used more than 5,500 per year. And when we saw that these visas were available, they are allocated and they weren't taking them up, we said, well, look, we can't get immigration reform through for the Irish, but we could do a deal with the Australians, which we did, yeah, and and uh, Homeland Security, and doing a reciprocal deal with the Americans for mm-hmm. those five and a half that we'd reciprocate in Ireland here, because there's so many American companies here, and a lot of American people would like to work in Ireland as well. Yeah. And we, and we had the jobs, and we'll have them once this pandemic is over also especially now that we're the only English-speaking country in Europe. Yeah, that's true. Uh, especially for, for American companies. But uh, So we went uh, to uh, our politicians here in the States, 
uh, and that we agreed to get to, they agreed to it, and the, the US government agreed that they would uh, agree to it as well. So we've been trying, and we've, it's passed in the House twice. Yeah. And then there was one block, we went for unanimous consent in the Senate, and one, one vote. I was so, with you when this happened. This is why I'm laughing because I remember it was not funny at all, but it was no, no, one vote. Uh, mm -hmm. My god, and now you see we have to go again, but it's very much on the cards. And yeah. uh, I was talking with the Taoiseach's office, uh, our prime minister, uh, before yesterday's Zoom with President Biden, uh, that it was to be discussed. And there, of course, the foreign affairs are foreign affairs. Uh, and ambassadors uh, office in in DC are totally on top of it as well. Yeah, and it's one of our priorities uh, right. that we would and hopefully we'd be able to get it in on a rider at some stage. Yeah, one of the advantages that we have is it's not an increase in visas. The yes. allocation is there; they're yeah. not being used. Exactly. So that was one way that we were able to get it. You know, get, get agreement that they that they'd offer to Ireland. Yeah. So. And we've done a lot of work. We've done a lot. I've spoken with the Hispanics. Uh, they're far because it's such a small amount. It's in the overall scheme of things. It's very, 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 very slight. Yeah. I mean, when I when Luis Gutierrez was uh, before Luis retired, I said to him, "By the way, Luis, we're doing a deal with the Australians on uh, on visas for Ireland. How many?" He said, "You know, kind of." I said, five and a, five thousand a year." Oh, for God's sake, he said, that's yeah. not, you know, which yeah. it isn't. No, it's not. And I, so this kind of came from what discussions that we have had. And anytime members of the Irish government would come to Chicago, I know we would meet with them in a round yeah. table. We met with mm -hmm. um, Taoiseach Bradker like two years ago and mm -hmm. we brought this up. And so this is a, uh, as I pointed out, because uh, this is my job is dealing with these sure. types of work. Visas Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, like, I just wanted to say that other countries have an allotment of like a professional visa. It's not just Australia. So there are other countries, and I brought this up to the Taoiseach, where um, so Canada and Mexico have their own version of, of a visa called the TN visa. Um, Australia has this E3. Um, uh, Chile and Singapore have a H1B one that's similar. So other countries have a working visa that allows citizens of their country to come in and work. And Ireland just mm. wanted to get the... the used visa or the unused visa numbers from the previous year so it would never affect australia's allotment going forward because it would be based on the previous year as well mm -hmm. and so sure. uh, we've all been working so hard for this and it's it's kind of in relation to future flow of of irish professionals coming out to the us irish workers with this reciprocal element um, and we're not forgetting about about working on immigration reform. This is just an additional thing that we've been working on, I think, for many years as well, in case people think that it, this is just the only thing. People are obviously still very much working on the immigration reform aspect of it as well. Um, to right. both, yeah, do both of that as well. And so um, one thing that I wanted to ask you about, which I was actually uh, in the room when this happened, um, back in 2014 when you got the opportunity to introduce president president obama mm -hmm. i have yeah. a photo in my office i don't think you know this of you standing up on the on the stage and president obama walking over to you um and i pulled a quote from it because when i was preparing for today um uh, president obama spoke about you and your family and he said um, together, they've gone from employing 10 workers to employing more than 250 workers. And you just heard what Billy said. This is what immigrants do. Um, yeah. Can you just talk to me about how, first off, like, how did you find out that you were going to, that you've been asked to introduce President Obama? I mean, how did that happen? And what, what were you feeling when you were asked to do that? Well, it, it, there's a very good story behind that. But when, when, um, when we were involved, I was involved, of course, I, I was spending a lot of time going in during his presidency. Uh, they opened up the whole immigration forum debate uh, in, in DC, and I had often gone up there, so they'd known I was dealing with the office uh, of the presidency, you know, the, the office of, uh, of the, the executive office next door to the White House and their immigration people. So there was a lot of toing and froing and, and whatever. Uh, and then, of course, my connection with uh, Senator Durbin and the Dreamers and whatever, and then the whole thing about the, the driver's license. So just, I was pretty involved. And, and yeah. then the 
Carlos knew that as well. But when uh, it was, he actually, about a week before it happened in Chicago, uh, he announced it down in Las Vegas. And I was there and I spoke to him actually there uh, in Las Vegas for just a couple of, a couple of minutes. He was, I was in the front line. And uh, he was coming to Chicago at the Copernicus Center, the Polish Center, uh, I think the following week or maybe two weeks afterwards. And so we were all delighted about it and we were all going there. And uh, there was about two, three, I think it was about 3,000 people. It was a really fantastic day. Oh, but brilliant. I think it was a Tuesday. Uh, but on the month, the day before, I was at home in Chicago and I got a phone call. And uh, I said hello, and this lady on the phone said, uh, "This is the uh, uh, this is the White House." <laughs> but we, they, they always, they, the immigration people would always say the White House here if they were talking about immigration matters. So I wasn't kind of Two, totally yeah. surprised. Who is it? Right? I thought of something about the immigration or what, or who's going to be there tomorrow or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the next thing she said, uh, "Billy, that, that's right." I said. Uh, uh, the president, I uh, said, who, who's speaking? I said, uh, how, oh no, yeah, she said, by the way, the president asked me, would you introduce him tomorrow in Chicago? And then I said, oh, hold on a second. And what's your name? I said, uh, Howley Ledbetter. Ah, for God's sake, I put down the phone. And then I said, the phone called, she called again. Oh my God. <laughs> that is my name, she said. Don't hang up, Billy, she said. I hadn't met her before that. And that's how it came up. Came about. Oh, well, I mean, that is hilarious. And if you see there, I have a photograph taken with Anna and myself. I, can you see oh. it up in the there? Yeah, open um, it further. Cool. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Of the two of Anna and myself with uh, President Obama. Is that, in the, is that from that day? Is that from that yes, same day? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. my God, that's amazing. <laughs> what I mean, what an incredible. Wow. It, it, it was just one of the great days of my life, naturally, you know, to, be, to get a call from the, but I mean, the way it happened, I hung up when she That's said, hilarious. You thought it was somebody pulling your leg, obviously. Like, I didn't yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah. someone having me on. Yeah. <laughs> That's a real Irish thing, though, isn't it, for somebody to joke yeah. like that? Like, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, well, what I mean, what an honor for Ireland, though. Uh, did I read that you're that you were the uh, the only Irish person, to, um, Irish man or woman, Irish person to have introduced a sitting president? Uh, did I read that? Well, I don't, I I don't know uh, that yeah, I was. I can't imagine who else would have done it, to be honest. But it was a, it was an incredible honor, absolutely, absolutely. It yeah. was a great day, and I was yeah. there, and I, my brother Ray came with yeah. me, and it we was, had was, such was an amazing day. It was just an incredible atmosphere that day. There was, yeah. Oh, yeah. it was fantastic, um, and that was before, and so that was, I mean, yeah, it was unreal. And then a few years after that, you um, entered politics. Well, not necessarily, you, but you got appointed, right, to the Irish mm -hmm. Senate in, what year was that, 2016? Uh, that was 2016. By yeah, Tisha Kenny Kenny? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the Taoiseach of the day, the Prime Minister of Ireland, when a new government is formed, there are 60 members of the Senate, which is voted on by the outgoing Senate and this new new uh, doll, the new uh, Parliament, uh, and also county councillors and city councillors. But the teacher has eleven of his own nominees. He nominates eleven people, okay. and it's, it's his prerogative of who he who he appoints. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're political. I was in, I, he appointed me the first uh, overseas uh, immigrant of. Uh, Senator for the diaspora. So I was a very first appointed and he appointed me as an independent, which is very magnanimous of him because there was no payback. You know, sometimes you're appointed by a prime minister or you're expected to vote for them. Yeah. There was no there were no conditions. Uh he appointed me, he said you're representing the the dias the Irish diaspora. Uh so I mean that was an incredible honor as well, of course, and it's been four years there. And you did such great work, you're, and not just for the diaspora. And I've been at, um, I was at the Global Irish Civic Forum, and somebody actually stood up and said, um, it was discussion about voting rights that hopefully we'll touch on as well. But somebody had said, mm -hmm. in lieu of getting, or before we get the right to vote, can we just get more Billy Lawlesses? People wanted more of you as more senators to represent the diaspora, recognizing 
what a great job you were doing, but also the importance of, of having somebody like that for the Irish diaspora. And I really believe, I think there should be more representation. And, and I was, you know, we were all disappointed uh, when the new Taoiseach did not appoint any yeah. overseas. We thought it was, you know, we thought they were going to expand them after I was appointed four years ago. Right. Uh, we thought, you know, and even the Taoiseach of the time was talking about expanding the role of the diaspora. And the Senate is the, is the right place for it. Because yeah. the Senate is, is a watchdog for the parliament, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, all bills come from the parliament have to go through the senate we can't rescind a bill the senate can't rescind a bill but it can be sent back for amendments yeah or we can create our own bill and it goes to the doll and it comes back into us and it's signed by the president but uh a lot of people are very disappointed diaspora are very disappointed that in fact there's no one and oh, no one I know. from northern Ireland either so yeah. So anyway, I, I, I might be able to rectify that. There's two vacancies coming yeah. up. Yeah, so. let's talk about that. So I was one of the one of the many that were well, we were extremely disappointed yeah. when you were not yeah. uh, reappointed yeah. and given the amazing yeah. work that you've done. And so, yeah. which leads us to our our final topic, or maybe penultimate yeah. topic, is to talk about yeah. you are now running for the Senate, right? For the Irish, for the Shannon, for people. That yes. Are Irish. Uh, as I said earlier, there are 60 uh, Senate members. Two of them have resigned uh, uh, within the last year. It's just a year old. It's not even a year old yet. Uh, one went to uh, private private business and one resigned for some administrative issues or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's two panels. There's uh, an agricultural panel and there's the industrial and commercial panel. I am running as an independent for the industrial and commercial panel. Great. Uh, so I am now, it'll be, it, it, it's a difficult one because the coalition parties have a big majority and they have a pact, you know, an, yeah. a, a unwritten pact that they vote for each other. So one of the father going for the industrial and commercial panel, which I'm running on, and uh, Fine Gael, are running a running candidate in the uh, agricultural panel, which Ian Marshall, the un moderate unionist from the north of Ireland, is, is running for. Mm -hmm. So if the pact holds, they have a, a big majority, but it's a secret ballot. And okay. there are people, you know, so hopefully I'll be able to convince some members in Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and the Greens, if that's the, the national coalition, yeah. uh, to vote for me. So I, I, so on, on that as well, anyone that's listening or will hear it, it's on the, 20, the, the voting starts on the 8th of, 7th of April. Okay. And both, uh, by the sitting senators and sitting TDs. Okay, so the only people that can vote in this are the sitting yeah. TDs and sitting senators. And But that doesn't mean that people can't help you out in other ways. How can people who are listening who are just so encouraged by the work that you've done that want you to be able to continue this work and you've done stuff not just for the diaspora but didn't you get rid of the no uh pubs clothing on Good yeah, yeah. friday in the set yeah that's ironic but, because since i got since i got the ban lifted after 90 years they've been closed since the last because of covid oh my gosh wow you're, Unbelievable. You're after 90 years and they're, they're closed since. Oh, God, you couldn't write that. But anyway, well, uh, you've done yeah. stuff for, you do stuff for people in Ireland as well as the diaspora. So what can people do to help you out in this upcoming election in April? It's very simple. Anyone that's listening that knows any senator in Ireland or TD, please call them and ask them to give me a number one vote for the, okay. the Senate election. Okay, That's as so, simple as that. Yeah, so Are Billy Lawless for shouting it. Yeah, please. Okay, and um, if people want to find out more about your election and about the work that you do, where yeah. can they go to find you out about you? Sure, up on my website is www.billylawless.ie. Okay, so billylawless.ie is the website, and then you're on various social i know you're on twitter and you're on the other or you're on other like social media uh um, oh, maybe no. are you on tiktok billy are you on there no. yet <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to get off these things so um, I, I know 
even deeper into them. Oh, Adding man. more. I know another clubhouse, TikTok, Instagram, all these, whatever you're on, I presume will be on your website and people can learn more about the right. issues that you're, that you're um, concerned about. And, um, and so just to reiterate again, it, um, if you know any TDs or any senators at home in Ireland, um, give them a call, let them know that you'd like them to support Billy Lawless in his campaign for the Irish Shannon that's coming up. Um, in April so hopefully Billy I hope that we get you back in the Shannad um, to continue the amazing work that you do I think that it is in recognition of of just that um, I think you being an Irish senator just adds an, an extra level to the you know to the work that you're doing here and I think that it's so critical right now with immigration reform and just so many things to be done that I think that I hope that we're able to see you back in the Irish Shannad soon. Well, it'd be nice. Be, I'll do my best and see. let's see what happens. Yeah, exactly. And he, yeah. regardless, we all have a lot of work to do and we all continue that yeah. anyway. Um, any closing comments, Billy, before we sign off? Anything you want to say? I think we've covered a lot. You know, yeah. the, my, my, my greatest wish, of course, is immigration reform. You know, we spent so many years, you and I and many, many yeah. others, uh, advocates of all ethnic groups, uh, the amount of work that's gone into it. I just wish that maybe our year is coming. Yeah. Uh, and our year is coming. You know, God, we have to have a breakthrough at some stage. So my biggest wish is that we get immigration reform oh. in the United States this year. Billy, you're bringing a tear to my eye. I just, you know, it's so such an emotional thing. And I know yeah. we've been through yeah. so many ups and downs. And I think that myself and you have a lot in common and one thing that we share is our hope we've never given up hope throughout this whole process yeah. I know yeah. Senator Durbin we've all felt that it, that's what's kept us going really throughout all this and so I share that wish with you and hope that um we can continue doing lots um of this great work in the future great stuff Fiona. thank you so much Billy it's been Thanks such a much. pleasure chatting to you yeah. take care <laughs> see you bye, bye. bye. Thanks. Thanks.